Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It is finally happening, y'all. Finally. After five years, we are finally getting the most requested feud in probably WWE women's history. Sasha Banks and Bayley is finally happening. The breakup happened tonight on SmackDown. And like I said, you know, I was planning and I still am. I'm going to do a SmackDown review, a special stream Saturday night, depending when you guys are watching this. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and you guys come join me for that. That is going to be absolute hype. We're going to talk about everything going on with SmackDown. But this is just a quick reaction. You know, there was just there was no way I was not going to talk about this right now. There was no way I was not going to talk about this today. I, I, I was going to try to save my thoughts for tomorrow night, but I just couldn't. The excitement just... Oh, finally. Sasha Banks and Bayley is happening. The breakup happened tonight on SmackDown, and I'm, I'm in shock. Was it, the, was it the best breakup? No, it wasn't. There were some things I, had, I took issue with. You know, uh, having no crowd... Like I said, I've been saying this for months on the podcast. They should be saving Sasha and Bailey for a crowd. And with you know, with how Sasha was written off TV tonight, I don't want to see Sasha back until there's there's fans back in attendance. And I've been saying that's most likely to happen at Survivor Series. We already see AEW; they have limited capacity. I will not be. I, I'm willing to bet money that by the time Survivor Series rolls around in November, we'll have live fans. That's when I would do Sasha's return. But I don't want to do any fancy booking tonight. I'm going to save that for the weekend. You know, I'm, I, I have so many video topics on where they can go with Sasha and Bailey. But I just want to give my initial reaction to the breakup tonight. You know, if Sasha doesn't come back to Survivor Series, you know, clearly the most obvious, re- you know, return would be uh, for Royal Rumble. She's going to be a favorite to win the Royal Rumble. I just don't know if WWE is going to be patient enough to... Wait to have Sasha and Bailey happen at WrestleMania next year. But clearly Sasha was turned babyface tonight. Bailey's remaining a heel with the attack. And it's just crazy because we all expected Sasha to be the one to turn on Bailey. Like we all predicted Sasha was gonna be the face in the feud because we've seen Bailey versus Sasha with Sasha as the heel and Bailey as the face down in NXT. Um but uh, you know, we all expected Sasha to be the one to turn on Bailey. Do you know for her to be frustrated and eventually just you know be tired of Bailey's antics and then just turn on her? You know, but we didn't expect this. It was unexpected, and it was just absolutely wild. So first off, before we even get to the attack itself, I want to talk about the match. So Sasha versus Sasha and Bailey versus Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, a rematch from WWE Payback that was announced on Wednesday. When I first saw this, I was like, uh, like I, I wasn't that hype because I just thought it was just going to be just like last week on Raw when we saw Sasha lose to Oscar for the second straight night. I thought that was just going to be it. They weren't going to tease anything with Sasha and Bailey. Nothing was going to be done. It was just going to be a pointless rematch for them to put on the show. But we were wrong. All right. And also then when I saw that Sasha and Bailey weren't in the main event with Shayna and Nia tonight, I, that was, I thought that was another indicator that nothing was going to happen tonight. Well, we were wrong. This match was better than the match at Payback. And like I said, I say this all the time. Sasha's the best female wrestler in the world. And it's not even close. It really is. It's not close. All right. She made Nia Jax look like a star tonight. And you guys know I cannot stand Nia Jax. You guys know I think Nia Jax is terrible. But man, oh man. She, like, oh. So basically what happens going into the match Sasha and Bailey took a bunch of punishment. And from the second half of the match, Bailey was getting beat down by Nia and Shayna. And, you know, they were isolating Bailey from the corner. Sasha trying to get tagged in. And it was like, it felt weird because I thought Shayna and Nia were the baby faces. But on commentary, they kept talking about how, you know, Sasha has no belts and how she really wants to gain the tag team championship again. And they were really like making you sympathize with Sasha because she didn't have any more title belts. And, you know, it's like in that moment, they turned Sasha from heel to babyface during this match because Sasha got the hot tag. She went off on Nia, put in some really good offense. 
And then the story became Sauce and Bailey just doing ta- double team after double team after double team, doing whatever they could to take out Sasha and Nia. There was some really good spots. There was a spot where Bailey did, I think, like a uh, leg drop to Nia into a uh, power bomb on the outside. I was surprised Sasha was actually able to get Nia up for the power bomb, but it shows just how strong Sasha is. So then we got back in the match. Shayna got involved. And then uh, Sasha and Bailey were trying everything, but they just couldn't get rid of uh, Shayna. So then Sasha, her left knee uh, basically hit the ring post when she tried to go for a double knees on Shayna. So that became the story, Sasha's injured leg. But Sasha being that baby face, like I said, they turned Sasha from heel to baby face in this match. And then, you know, Sasha's selling the leg and she's just still fighting on. She's persevering, doing everything she can to fight through the pain. And, you know, Shayna and I just kept going for the leg. And the, like I said, they're really making you sympathize with Sasha. So here at the ending, I hated the ending. That was the only bad part of the match. You know, they decided to have Nia do a crossbody on both Sasha and Bailey for the win. And uh, just like at Payback when Shada was able to tap out Bailey using Sasha's arm, they have Nia pin both Sasha and Bailey at the same time, which is awful. Because you guys know how much I hate Nia Jax and how terrible she's in the ring. But Sasha made Nia look good tonight. Like I said, Nia, there's only two good Nia matches that come to mind. Nia versus Ronda Rousey from Money in the Bank a couple years back. And Nia versus Sasha um, f- from uh, the Monday Night Raw, the, like the, the Raw before SummerSlam back in, I believe, 2017. You, like I said, Sasha is like the only person that can really bring Nia to a good match because it shows how great she is. So basically, they, they turned Sasha to a babyface during this match. Mike Close is talking about how bad he feels for Sasha, you know, remaining no belts banks. And it's just like a flip, it was switch. And now after the match, Sasha is selling the leg injury. Like I said, Sasha is so amazing at what she does. Not only does he make Nia look like a star, but she was so good at selling the leg injury. Like, if I didn't know Sasha as well as I, I do... I would, you would have honestly thought that Sasha really injured her leg. That's how great she is. It's one of the many reasons why I believe she's the best female wrestler in the world. And it's not even close. So, after the match, traders are coming in. They're talking, you know, the commentators are talking about Sasha's injured leg. And I'm just like, is this how they're going to write Sasha off TV? You know, they're going to have Bailey without Sasha for the next couple of months. While Sasha is selling her leg injury off TV. But we come back from commercial break. They're trying to put Sasha in the stretcher. But, you know, being the boss he is, he's refusing medical help. But the officials leave. And then Bailey tries to help Sasha out of the rig. This is where it gets good. Bailey uh, helps Sasha out of the rig. But out of nowhere, just snaps. And she hits Sasha with a brutal kick. You know, I wished commentary. Like, they did a decent job of, you know, playing this out. But... It would have been so much better. I, w- I, would've, I wanted Michael Cole to really get emotional. Like, really, if I was on coverage, I would have got like really, like, I would have really showed emotion because this is something that people have been waiting for for years. And then, per storyline, Sasha and Bailey were never going to break up. You know, they're the best of friends, you know? And even though we've been waiting for this, per storyline, you don't expect it. And. Everyone was expecting Sasha to be the one to turn on Bailey, but here's Bailey turning on Sasha. I'm sitting here in shock. You know, Bailey's just attacking Sasha, you know, attacking her leg, brutal attack, right? It could have been better. I wish there was crowd there. I also didn't like how they had the uh, the officials, like the officials were just standing on the outside of the ring, not doing anything. I didn't like that that much. I felt like they could have, you know, played up, had the officials try to, you know, get Bailey off. Sasha instead of just standing there watching the attack saying, stop it, Bailey, what are you doing? You know, like, like I said, this could have been a much better attack. And I kind of wish they waited till there was fans back in attendance to do this, to make it feel that much more special. Um, But if you looked at the Thunderdome cameras, people were in shock and it was just wild. And then we see Bailey did all her finishers. I think she did a Bailey to belly. She also did that knee uh, finisher she does. I don't think it has a name, Uh, but uh, it was a brutal attack, and then we saw she put a chair, steel chair on Sasha's leg. You know, basically, that's like everyone knows when they do that spot, it's supposed to be like the break your leg spot. But Sasha, you know, still fighting, she, you know, kicks Bailey off of her, but still, she just didn't have enough power to fight uh, Bailey off at that point. 
So then after doing another finisher, Bailey puts the chair on Sasha's neck, goes to the uh, top rope, and then does a elbow drop. You know, basically this concluding that we're writing Sasha off TV. This was the point where you, you knew there was no return. And it's just crazy. It's it just crazy. Like, like like I said, the attack could have been better, but I'm just happy that we're finally getting it. Because for five years, we've been complaining about this. Five years, we've been asking for this, and we're finally going to get it. You know? Uh, the only thing, the only problem I had with uh, the the uh, head spot is I kind of wish, you know, Sasha's sort of like my neck's broken. She just kind of fell flat after the attack, but still, Sasha's amazing what she does. I'm not going to, you know, go into it too much, but... Also, what's crazy is, you know, afterwards, just seeing Bailey's look. And I know Bailey was saying something outside of the ring, but we couldn't really hear her. But, you know, I, I'm trying, I was sitting there also trying to think why, you know, it would have made more sense for Sasha to turn on Bailey. But, you know, uh, the one reason that I could came up with and the one explanation I have right now is Bailey being jealous of Sasha. Ever since Sasha and Bailey reunited last year, when Sasha first came back for a few with Becky, and once Bailey uh, finally turned heel and cut her hair and everything, you know, it's always been more. It's been more about Sasha. You know, every time Michael asking, "Oh, what if we got Sasha versus Bailey?" You know, all these. It's it's you know, Sasha was the star of that duo, even though most of the time Bailey was the champion. Outside of the time that they were, you know, double champions and tag champions, you know, Bailey was always the sole champion, but Sasha would always get more of the spotlight, no matter if it was against Lacey Evans or Naomi or, you know, Shanna and Nia or Asuka. It, it didn't matter. Sasha would always get more of the spotlight, no matter if she had a title or not. Because no disrespect to Bailey, as great as Bailey is, and she has been fantastic in this heel role, absolutely fantastic, doing the best work of her career. Sasha is the biggest is the bigger star. We all know this, right? Sasha is the best female wrestler in the world. So, yeah, I can see Bailey's jealousy just coming to a point where you know I'm tired of Sasha always getting all the uh, all the attention because it would have made more sense for Sasha to turn on Bailey because of her anger of you know losing the tag titles, Bailey not being there for her against Oscar, and you know then Bailey being the one to tap out against Shayna. You know, it would have made more sense. But, you know, I'm not complaining. Clearly, you know, Sasha's now a baby face. You know, afterwards, they uh, they put on the stretcher. They put on the ambulance. We're not going to see Sasha for a while. And another question, you know, to bring up is how long will Sasha be off TV? Because we know how dirty he is, especially when it comes to ratings. They'll bring back a Brock Lesnar or a Stone Cold Steve Austin or a Goldberg or whoever just to pull a cheap rating. Like, what would make the most sense, especially with what they did, even though the attack could have been better, that attack was meant to write Sasha off TV for a long time. So I would not want to see Sasha back on TV till the Royal Rumble, all right? And as hard as it would be to go another four months without Sasha Banks, it would make the most sense for the story, you know? And I'm definitely going to do videos talking about how they can book this, how they can keep this story going from now all the way through WrestleMania, because that would make the most sense for Sasha to come back. Win the Rumble, and then go on to challenge Bailey. Finally, get her first WrestleMania victory. Become Grand Slam Banks finally, and get that title run she deserves. Yes, you know I would have loved to see Sasha do a little bit more as a heel, but you know if WWE does this correctly, and I hope and pray they do, this will make Sasha. She's already the best female wrestler in the world in my eyes. But they should treat Sasha the same way they treated Becky Lynch when she was going through her man of face. You don't need to change Sasha's entire gimmick. You know, what you need to do with Sasha when she comes back, no matter if it's that Survivor Series or the Rumble or whenever, because we have no idea how long Sasha's going to be off TV selling her injuries. What you need to do is you need, you need to have Sasha be that badass babyface. She doesn't need a complete character change. Her, her, you know, Sasha has a babyface and a heel. There's not too much of a difference. She's still the legit boss. What you need to do is to have her not be that that the, the same baby face she was before. She needs to be a badass, take no prisoners, like Stone Cold Steve Austin, right? Because if you let her be the baby face we all know she can be, she will be the top baby face star in the women's division, and she will carry that SmackDown Women's Championship with pride for as long as she holds it, which should be a year, because it's about time Sasha gets her long title reign. It, it, it's about time. Like, WWE needs to realize that Sasha is the best female wrestler they've ever had. And it's time that they treat her as such. 
No more 30-day title reigns when she gets that SmackDown Women's Championship and needs to be for 30, or, or not 30, uh, for a year. I'm sorry. You know, WWE, it's like they program you that anytime Sasha holds a main roster championship, she can only hold it for 30 days. We can no longer have that. She needs to hold that title for a year. Or for at least a very long time. And I already have so many different storyline ideas for what they can do with a Sasha Banks babyface championship run. But I'm not going to get, you know, I'm not going to get ahead of myself because that could be forever. We, we, we still need to get through the Sasha and Bayley feud first. And that's the big thing. You know, but it's going to be interesting to see how long they keep Sasha Banks off TV. But I am just so, so, so happy that we're finally getting the Sasha Banks and Bayley feud. Finally, the breakup is complete. There was times when I thought we would never get it. And as great as Sasha and Bayley were as a duo, and I read something on Twitter that all of the women's tag teams, if you guys remember, when the Women's Tag Team Championship Elimination Chamber match happened about a year and a half ago, back at the beginning of 2019, all those teams are now broken up outside of the Riot Squad, which is crazy. It really is. And I thought, you know, there was a time where I thought they would never break up Sasha Banks and Bayley. Just because, why would they? You know, but I'm just happy that we're finally getting Sasha back as a babyface. I'm finally happy that we're getting Sasha solo again. Like, you know how great it's going to be to see Sasha come out to her full theme song? I don't know if she's going to go back to her her original theme uh, or if she's going to keep the Snoop Dogg. Because the Snoop Dogg theme, as great as it was, it made more sense with her heel personality. But still, I'm not going to complain. But it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what happens. Maybe, who knows, maybe Sasha comes back with a whole new hair color. Like, there's so many ideas flowing through my mind right now. But I'm just so happy that we're finally getting the feud we've been waiting for. It's just now, you know, now it's just a question of when. When Sasha's going to return. Is it going to be for Survivor Series? Is it going to be for Hell in a Cell? Remember, Sasha's faced both Becky and Charlotte in Hell in a Cell. Bailey's the only member of the four horsewomen she hasn't faced in a Hell in a Cell match. You know, they can make the story about Sasha finally getting redemption, you know. There's there's lots there's lots of directions they could go with this. And we're going to be talking about them all throughout the week. Like I said, this is just an initial reaction. It's a long initial reaction, but you guys know how much I love Sasha. And, you know, I'm just... So freaking happy that we're finally getting the Sasha and Bailey feud. Like I said, guys, I'm going to be doing a full SmackDown review stream probably Saturday night. This is just an initial reaction. Uh, throughout the week, I'm going to be posting tons of videos, you know, discussing where they can go with this. It's going to be interesting to see. You know, it's, it's going to be crazy to see Sasha's social media, like how active she's going to be. Is she going to be selling those injuries? Is she even going to be on social media? You know? And I'm already a little bit angry with WWE because there was an announcement today that Vince sent a letter to all the WWE superstars saying, like, you can't be on Twitch, you can't be on Cameo, you have 30 days to, you know, uh, take yourself off those platforms or you uh, you bear the risk of getting fined, suspended, or even terminated, which I disagree with uh, so much. You know, the fact that Vince would go to those links absolutely is disgusting. You know, like, WWE superstars are independent contractors. They have every right. Like, what does that mean for people like Up, Up, Down, Down with Xavier Woods and Zelina Vega and all these other superstars that are on Twitch and all the superstars that are on Cameo and all these other, you know, sites? It's like Vince is like a slave owner and he's, you know, he's saying his slaves can't do this and that. Like, that's absolutely ridiculous. So... Like I said, when I do the SmackDown review, probably Saturday night or Sunday at the latest, we have a lot to talk about. The Roman Reigns heel turn, Roman Reigns versus Jay Uso for the Universal title, you know, the, you know, Otis. There's a lot to talk about. The whole IC title situation. So definitely, we're going to do a full-blown SmackDown review talking about everything. But I really just wanted to do this initial reaction, talking about Sasha finally, t- uh, you know, finally breaking up with Bayley and how great it is going to be. We're finally going to get it. We're finally, hopefully, going to get Grand Slam Banks. Finally going to get Sasha getting her first WrestleMania victory, potentially. I am so excited, and I cannot wait to see where this goes. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. How excited are you guys for the Sasha Bailey feud? You know, what, did it shock you? Like, it shocked me. Not only did it shock me that they did the breakup tonight, and they didn't do it at the pay-per-view, you know, I felt like it would have had a much larger impact if they did at Class of Champions 
or uh, payback. But still, I'm just shocked that they did it. And I'm also shocked that it was Bailey that was the one that turned on Sasha. Like, we all knew the feud was going to be Bailey as the heel, as Sasha's the baby face. And would that made sense for Bailey to turn back into a face? You know, she would have to regrow the ponytail, bring back the Bailey to, you know, the Bailey buddies. And I don't want to see Bailey ever doing that hugger gimmick again. Never. But I'm just so happy that we're getting the feud. And I'm excited. There's so many different directions they could go with this. And it's going to be so interesting to see how it goes. It's, you know, I'm going to miss Sasha, you know, not being on TV. It's already hard enough getting through Raw. Without Sasha now, now that she's not going to be on SmackDown for the foreseeable future. Like I said, we have no idea when Sasha's going to come back. But if Sasha's not back till Survivor Series or the Royal Rumble at the latest, it's going to be a hard fall. It really is. The only positive I can say is at least we don't have to, you know, sit back thinking, is Sasha ever going to come back to WWE? Because remember, back when she took her four-month hiatus last year, you know, we all, there was rumors saying that she might never come back because we had no idea what was happening. No idea. We, some of us thought Sasha was going to retire and leave WWE for good. So at least now we know that she's going to be off TV selling an injury for a storyline. But it's going to be crazy when she does eventually return. I, like I said, I would save her return for when we have fans. No matter if it's before Survivor Series, after, or the Royal Rumble. Those are the two most likely scenarios. Maybe Hell in a Cell, but right now, I just don't see it happening. You know, with the Bailey's attack, it wouldn't make sense for Sasha to come back, you know, in less than a month. She's going to be on TV selling not only the leg injury, but her neck injury. You know, so definitely. And plus, Sasha's been carrying Dirty B on her back along with Bailey since the pandemic started, since back in February. So she deserves a little bit of a break, and she's going to use this time to, you know, heal up. And then come back even stronger and better. And we're finally going to get the Sauce and Bailey feud. And hopefully we'll see if they can top what they did at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. But like I said, I feel like I've said already 30 times in this video. I'm just so happy we're finally getting the Sasha and Bailey feud. So let me know in the comment section your thoughts on it. The attack could have been better, like I said. I would have saved it for a live crowd. Plus, I would have had Michael Cohen and Corey Graves on commentary playing it up a little bit more. You know, and I would have had more officials involved, but still, uh, I'm just happy that we're getting the feud. But definitely, man, we're going to be talking about this a lot, not only for the ne the next couple of weeks, but for the next couple of months, you know, until Sasha re returns on TV. But, man, I am so excited. Definitely, man, crazy. Absolutely crazy. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Once again, leave a like in this video if you guys are hyped for Sasha and Bailey. Put your predictions down below. I'll be talking about this so much more on the channel in the next couple weeks. This was just a long initial reaction. Make sure to subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. Thank you to everyone that live tweeted with me during this breakup uh, segment tonight. It was absolutely crazy. Love you guys. Follow me on social media. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Enable notifications by kicking the bell next to my name, Fitzwang TV. So you guys are notified every time I post a new video. Thank you guys What's so much. What's going on, everybody? I want to welcome you back here to the Legit Soup Podcast. And we have the best guest we could ever ask for. She is the legit boss, the blueprint, the standard, the greatest female wrestler of all time. The one, the only, Mercedes Vernado, a.k.a. Sasha Banks is here. Sasha, thank you so much for joining us what's going on hi george how are you i hope your day is going well um thank you so much for the request and the questions no problem sasha but before we let you go i have two quick questions that i'm dying to ask all right i gotta hear your answer to these i'm gonna make it tough on you outside of bailey because i know she's your bff and you said so many times how she's the best match you've ever had Outside of Bailey, what are your favorite matches that you've had so far in your WWE career? And question number two, you have so many great ring gears. What is your favorite ring gear out of the million that you've had so far in your WWE career? That is super hard. You know, Bailey is my favorite <laughs> yeah, yeah, we of know. all time. But my favorite matches besides with her definitely has to be my hell in a cell against yep. becky and that was the best female that match was just insane and changed yep. my best life female forever wrestling match of the whole year i can't believe that match i'm really proud of that match <laughs> um who else let me try to think of someone who's not becky, becky or bailey <laughs> uh i've had some really good ones with uh 
Ruby, I love mm. working with her. I like okay. Ruby, Ember. Ember, yeah. I like yep. that triple threat we did. I wish we could see more of that. Uh, what else can I remember? The one from Boston with Naya. That's one of my favorite oh. matches. Okay, okay. Uh, I hope you don't mind. Uh, I'm just thinking. I'm sorry. You gave I'm us a thinking. lot of answers. That's a lot of answers. I gave you yeah. answers. So, no, those are my answers. Um, and my favorite ring gear ever. Yeah, I can't wait to hear this. Probably Wonder Woman. Oh, or... Royal Rumble. Of course, my Eddie Guerrero one. Yep. WrestleMania and 32. from recently, yeah. I really love the class. Of the red and blue one. Yes. The Clash of Champions. Yep. <laughs> uh, gear that Love I have, that one. The oh. navy one and red and gold. So mm, that's my favorite scheme, ones. Man. Thank you so much for this question. No, no, thank and, you. Um, thank you. I'm so thankful you're a fan, George. So thank you so much for sending this to me. I hope you have an amazing you day. Too. I hope you stay thank safe you for joining and well. us, man. And thank you so much for being a fan. Bye. Huge shout out to Sasha Banks for joining us here on the Legit Shoot podcast man the number one wrestling podcast on youtube because we tell it how it is like nobody else does so make sure you guys subscribe if you guys are new man peace